Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is part three of the digital note taking for beginner series. And today I'm going to be going over how to make digital notes using Notability and GoodNotes on the iPad. I have walkthrough videos on both of these apps as well as a comparison between them on my channel. So if you want to check them out, they'll be in the description box. So I am mashing these two apps together in this video because the note taking processes for both of them are very, very, very similar, save for a few differences. But throughout this video, I will be pointing out some differences between the apps, mainly the ones that will more noticeably impact your digital note taking experience. In terms of organization system, Notability's organization system involves dividers and subjects. The way I would suggest you to organize your files is that you would have one divider per semester and one subject per course. Now, I will say that their organization system pales in comparison to other note taking apps because you don't have the ability to continue sorting your files past these two levels. Of course, this is a personal preference thing. With GoodNotes, the file sorting system extends beyond that. You can continue creating new folders to sort your files in. However, what I do wish GoodNotes had is the option to view your folders in a list like how OneNote and Notability do it, rather than having to motion through large folder thumbnails. The way I'd organize my notes on GoodNotes is similar to that of Notability, only I would also have folders for each topic as well. So there's two ways I use Notability and GoodNotes for digital notes, PowerPoint annotations, and rewritten study notes. Now to be actively learning in class while annotating, I always suggest briefly going over the PowerPoint the night or morning before class so that you're not actually reading the PowerPoint for the first time during lecture while trying to annotate at the same time. There is just too much distraction there and you probably won't even know what you're really annotating. With that said, when I annotate my PowerPoints, I'm more focused on writing legibly rather than as neatly as possible. I tend to use black ink, but I also encourage you to use blue or red or even purple if you want your annotations to stand out from the PowerPoint text. Now, because writing can still take people a lot of time, even on an iPad, I always recommend using abbreviations to speed up this process. Some abbreviations that I like to use are listed here. Of course, once you rewrite your study notes, you can totally re-expand them if you like. If you're not writing fast enough to keep up, you can take advantage of Notability's audio recording feature which you can use while annotating your PowerPoints because you can then replay the audio and also see when and where you wrote your notes. You can also tap a note and the audio jumps to whatever was being said at that time of the note, which is pretty cool. I haven't used this feature much in my classes, but I do think it would be more useful for students who have to sit in aggressive university courses where sometimes there's just way too much information to absorb in one session. When sitting through lectures with this PowerPoint, I tend to highlight key terms or key points that are emphasized in class and not try to highlight the entire PowerPoint slide. Typically, I just limit my highlighter to one or two colors because I don't have the time to be making my notes look nice or anything. After you've annotated your PowerPoint, you can choose to rewrite your notes on a brand new page in either app. What's great about Notability is that you can actually enable a multi-note view by swiping right and opening up the PowerPoint next to your note page. You cannot do this in GoodNotes at the moment, so I suggest uploading the PowerPoint to Google Drive or some other storage platform and pulling it up side by side with GoodNotes. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be writing out these study notes on Notability. Personally, I'd make a whole document dedicated just to study notes and this notebook per se would have all the pages of study notes from all your PowerPoints. I like to use squared or grid A4 sized paper on a white background for the neatest notes possible, especially if you're gonna be making diagrams or illustrations, the grids will help you space out everything nicely. If you've previously followed my videos, then you'll know that I always encourage the use of multiple headings to organize your notes. If you scroll through your PowerPoint, it's very likely that you will find topics that you can convert into your subheadings. You may or may not wanna write this out, but sometimes a to-do list at the top is helpful for keeping track of your note-taking progress. These headings can come from whatever you wrote in your to-do list. I would suggest also not to write every word from the PowerPoint, but a combination of the key terms and points from your PowerPoint and your annotations to produce notes that are more meaningful than just having the PowerPoint itself. Writing out the content of your study notes is a pretty straightforward process. You're just going over your PowerPoint annotations, again, as I said, and also re-expanding any abbreviations if you like. Again, I'd like to emphasize how helpful color coding can be in helping you make information stand out. I will be releasing a video on how to create an effective color coding system for your notes. If you can, it'd be helpful to add pictures that originally came from your PowerPoint to supplement your study notes and then label these diagrams accordingly. 
If you want to give your notes a nice clean look once you are finished, you can change the template back to blank A4 paper as well. Now, if we're talking about backup, if I were you, I'd turn on auto backup just to keep your notes in a safe place in case anything happens. However, in terms of backing up your notes, currently Notability has the option to auto backup to various platforms. However, backing up with GoodNotes 5 is more complicated as there isn't any outright auto backup feature, which is funny because it was there in GoodNotes 4. But rather, you can choose to manually backup and then export to a storage platform of your liking. Overall, writing digital notes on a tablet is a really fun and efficient way of doing digital notes, and I hope that this video was helpful in demonstrating how one can accomplish that using GoodNotes or Notability. Let me know in the comments below which app you're currently using, or if there's another note-taking app that I haven't reviewed or talked about yet, please let me know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.